we are in. Welcome to lecture number two, Anatomy and Physiology. Today we have one of the very important uh, lectures because they are going to be the base for the next lecture. Okay. All right, so people are still coming. All right, so let's get this started. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Let me, yes. Let me put my pen tablet. All right. Where is my pen? Okay. All right, so let's get to start. Today, uh, our journey is going to be uh, basically tissues, membranes. After, after that, we are going to talk, first of all, we are going to talk about the cell, general uh, uh, structures of the cell, the functions of the cell. So we are going to talk about a little bit about DNA, meiosis, and mitosis. We are going to be a lot, we are going to take spend a lot of time talking about the membrane transportation, very important to understand the osmosis that we are actually learned in bioscience. So basically, this is a review, all right? We are going to give you more details. Uh, we are going to talk about osmosis. Uh, we are going to talk about tissues, the different type of tissues. This is very important. And the nervous tissue at the end. All right, so let's get this started. All right, so cells and their functions. So what uh, we we already know that the cell is the uh, smallest functional unit of life, right? So and the cell is going to be composed by many structures. So, but what is the size of the cell? Why you cannot see? Why you cannot see structures? Uh, what what you cannot see when it's so tiny? All right, so if you remember, let's make a, a, a visual here, is that if you know what is one centimeter, right? So you know what is one centimeter. You have an idea of how much is one centimeter, correct? Yes. All right, so one centimeter, mm -hmm. let me modify this a little bit here. Okay, now I can see everybody. So one centimeter, how many millimeters we have? Yeah. How many millimeters we have in one centimeter? Ten. Ten. Very good. Ten. Now, I want you to imagine that millimeter, millimeter, and divided by ten. So that tiny millimeter divided by ten. If you divide it by ten, take that piece, or one tenth, or one millimeter, that is the maximum resolution that you have visually so that means that is the that is the smallest size of a structure that, that you can see with your bare eye a smaller than that you cannot see it so if you divide one millimeter 10 times and take one of these 10 pieces one only that is the maximum size that you can visualize a smaller than that that is microscopic. So that means that you cannot see it. Okay? Now, I was telling you, and just to have an idea about what we are talking here, we have 100 trillion cells. 100 trillion. trillion. So it's 1 million of a billion. 100 times. So that is the number of cells that you have in your body. Okay? Uh, from these cells, does, there is a cell that you can see with your bare eye. There is only one cell that you can see with a bare eye. And what is the size of that cell? Is one tenth of a, mi a millimeter, a millimeter, millimeter. You follow me? Which cell is that? The only cell the that you can. See. Sorry, sorry. Who, who? The the, oh, you say the ovum? Yes. You, yes, you're totally right. The only cell that you can see with your bare eye is an ovum. An ovum. Okay? So, 
Now, uh, a red blood cell, for example, a red blood cell will be 70% of the size of an ovum. So you cannot see the red blood cell, but it's very, very tiny. Okay? So in the PowerPoint, as you see here, I show in you a microscope. Are we are going to learn the part of the microscope? Of course not. So the, I want just you to make understand what is a microscopic structure. And basically, we have viruses, we have bacteria, we have amoebas, protozoas, etc. Okay, all right. So the study, the study of the cells by the microscope is called cytology. Cytology, cytology is the study of the cells. The study of the cells. Cytology. When you're talking about a group of cells, a group of cells are going to form what we call a tissue. And the study of the tissue is going to be called histology. Histology. Cytology is basically when uh, uh, cytology, we use that word when somebody have some cancer and they make a biopsy and they they made a cytology study. A cytology study, a study of the cell. Just to give you an idea, for example, this is a normal cell, a normal cell. But mostly, in general, cancer cells are going to be looking like this. Big cells and huge nucleus, very pigmented nucleus. So that is basically the character. This cell transform into this cancer cell. And the distribution of the cells are going to be erratical. It's going to be chaotic. So that is basically this, the study of the cell, cytology. And when you are talking about a tissue, a group of cells, that is called histology, okay? Just to mention, I'm not going to ask what is histology, what is histology, but you need to integrate that into your information, please, okay? All right, so a cell. The cell is an autonomic, cell-replicating, independent, so we can read that, right? But I'm going to give you the concept. What is a cell? Cell is the smallest unit of life. Very simple. The smallest unit of life. The smallest unit of life. Okay? So this uh, cell are going to be, uh, basically, as I mentioned, are going to be composed by organelles. You know the, or the level of organization. You have molecules. The molecules form organelles. And the organelles are going to form the cell. The cell is, a, is going to put together all these organelles. Okay? All right. So the cell structure, we are going to see different components of the cell structure. In the cell structure, you will see different areas. We are going to talk a little bit as a review, because that is bio, uh, bioscience, but I'm going to repeat it again. Uh, uh, mitochondria, lysosomes, etc. And we need to know the functions of each of them. The functions of each of them. So please, can you excuse me? This is crazy. Uh, the school is calling me. Just a moment. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, so we are going to see the importance of these uh, organelles and the functions of them. All right, so let's keep moving. So here in this chart, in this graphic, you're going to use these graphics in your entertainment when you, uh, uh, your free time, when you, uh, yeah, for entertainment at home. You're going to have this chart and you say, oh, what is one? What is two? What is three? What is four? The answers are here. Okay. Not, I'm not going to basically ask in detail all this stuff, only what I'm going to remark today. All right. So one thing, these uh, bulbs, light, are the open eyes, open ears. That is your study guide. Okay. 
All right, so it's already incorporated in your in your lectures. Okay, it's not a separate component. So we have the nucleus is an organelle. So students, people make a mistake that they think that nucleus is so important that it's not an organelle. Yes, the nucleus is an organelle too, as well as the as the mitochondria, lysosomes, vacuoles, etc. So the nucleus is an organelle. And more than that, is the largest, is the most prominent uh, component of the of the what of the um, of the cell. One thing I want to tell you about this: inside the nucleus, we have we have the DNA, correct, and the RNA. We gave it, we gave you that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, perfect. For example, that is all normal cells in our body. There is one cell who lose the who is going to lose the nucleus. That is the red blood cell. So you know the red blood cell, when you draw a red blood cell, is this shape. Yes or no? Look at that. Right? So I didn't do this. See the shape of the of the red blood cell? Right? Yeah. Do you see that? Right? Okay. So the, looking from above, you will see like a dog. That's like, this is like an indentation. So why is that? Because the red blood cells who are born, they born from the from the bones. The bones are going to produce the red blood cells. At the time that the red blood cells are going out from the bone, at the time that the red blood cells are coming out from the bone, they lose the nucleus. When they lose the nucleus, so the red blood cells that are running in your bloodstream do not have nucleus. Do not have nucleus. The red blood cells who are running, running into your bloodstream do not have nucleus. The red blood cells have nucleus when it's still inside the bone. And why is it still inside the bone? Because the red blood cells, they bo they born inside the bone. But at the moment that the red blood cell with the nucleus inside the bone are coming out, that moment the red blood cell is going to lose the is going to lose the nucleus. And when they lose the nucleus, that space are going to make the cells have this shape. It's called biconcave shape. Okay? All right. So talking about the nucleus too. The nucleus is going to be having the DNA. For example, let's talk about the let's talk about the the bacteria. The bacteria, the bacteria have nucleus, yes or no? No. The bacteria do not have nucleus. No. The bacteria do not have nucleus. And there is a common mistake here. So they said that the nucleus, if the bacteria doesn't have nucleus, tell me, do they have the bacteria? They have DNA? Yes or no? Yes, they do. They have the DNA. Why <laughs> you can tell they have the DNA? Because one of the function of the DNA is to have reproduction. They are going to reproduce. And tell me, the bacteria reproduce? Yes, they reproduce. So they have actually DNA, but do not have the nucleus of the of the the membrane of the nucleus. Because if this is a cell, here we have the nucleus. This line I just draw here is the membrane that is forming. It's a membrane forming the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, we have the DNA. The bacteria do not have the membrane nucleus, but is still having, is still having the DNA. So the, the, what is inside the bacteria is like a chicken soup. All is everything chaotic everywhere. But in our cells, our cells is more organized. We have the nucleus. We okay with that? Okay, yes. another thing I want to uh, tell you is that uh, uh, we have actually the DNA inside the nucleus, and the DNA inside the nucleus is in this shape, right? Right, yeah. DNA. Now, but when the DNA is going to become like this, these are chromosomes, correct? 
Yes. yes. All right. So if you have the DNA here, look at this, the DNA, the DNA, this is the DNA. So if you cut by pieces, if you cut by pieces, the DNA piece here, another piece here, another piece here, another piece, another piece, you're going to have that each piece is going to turn into a chromosome. So the DNA is going to be cut in pieces. It's like you have a dough and you cut pieces to make a bread. So each piece is going to form later on in chromosome. When is going to be uh, in the shape of chromosome? The only time that the cells are going to make the DNA change shape into chromosomes is when the cell are going to get into cell division. When the cell are going to reproduce, not before, not after, only during the reproduction uh, phase, they are going to change the DNA, double strand, the double helix of the DNA are going to cut in pieces and transform and change shape into chromosomes. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, that is about. Now, before we go to this, I want just to uh, think about something. Let's suppose that you, you, you are a cell. You are a cell. Yes, you are a cell. And with that, I'm telling you what is doing the cell. The cell, they need to eat. You need to eat. Yes, the cell need to yes. eat. The cell, you need to drink water. You need to drink fluids. Yes, the cell drink fluids too. You 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 need to pee. You need to go to the bathroom. Yes, the cell go to the to the bathroom. They go to pee. They you need to poo. Yes, you need to poo. That cell is going to do the same. You are going to uh, 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 you're going to pee and poo, and you're going to reproduce. You need to reproduce. Yes, the cells are going to reproduce. So that is the functional unit of life, the cell. So the, what is a functional unit? Is that one of the whole of the of the whole scene? One piece have the same functions of the whole scene. It's like you have a wall with bricks. The wall have these characteristics, right? The blocking, whatever. It's very hard, stiff, whatever. And each brick is having the same properties of the whole wall. It's the same the cell that you have in your body. So the cells are going to eat, are going to drink, are going to pee, are going to poo. They are going to reproduce. They, you produce gas? You produce gas? Yes, you produce gas. Every day we produce gas. The cell produces gas too. You need to grow. you born, the cell born. You need to grow, grow the cells. We are going to grow exactly like an individual. You okay with that? All right. All right, so now. We have the, uh, the nucleus, the nucleus, the large organelle in the cell is composed by the double helix uh, DNA that is going to change into chromosomes at the moment they are going to have the cell division. What is the nucleus? The nucleus is, is inside, this is the cell, this is the nucleus, this is the DNA, and on the side we have what we call the nucleus. This is the nucleus. What is the nucleolus doing? The nucleolus are going to contain the RNA, the RNA, the RNA. So that is the beginning that you learned in previous class, the transcription and the translation in order to make a protein, right? So the components of the nucleus will be, so as a, a recap, uh, the DNA in the form of a double helix and the uh, nucleolus that contain the RNA. When you are going to get into cell division and reproduce reproduction, the DNA is going to transform into chromosomes. For that, the nuclear membrane disappears. This nuclear membrane disappears. And this is going to turn into chromosomes, 46 chromosomes. Okay? So when the cells are going to finish the reproduction, the chromosomes are going to recoil and they are going to form the DNA again. They are going to form the DNA again, and they are going to form the nucleus. The nucleus. Okay? All right. We have the plus, uh, plasmatic membrane. The plasmatic membrane is called the cytoplasmatic membrane as well. 
cytoplasmatic plus uh, cytoplasmatic cyto plasmatic membrane. Sometimes it's called the double layer membrane, double layer membrane. So double layer membrane or cytoplasmatic membrane or plasma membrane is the same, okay? And that is basically the walls of the cell. You are where you are, you're at home, okay? So you are looking the cell. The walls of your house or the room where you are right now, that is basically the cell membrane or cytoplasmatic membrane or the double layer membrane, whatever you want to call. Now, I want you to imagine you are inside the cell looking the cell membrane and the cell membrane is rigid as these walls. The answer is no. It's like a little bit like silicon are wavy. They are not like a metal, very hard. They are going to be some kind of fle flexible, flexible, all right? So I don't know if somebody wants to leave. I see a message, but I cannot go on back. So somebody can tell me something happened. Somebody is telling me a message. Okay. It's the ACH. ACH, okay, just tell me ACH. Okay, excellent, very good. Okay, so now, so the cell membrane is a wavy. Wavy, right? So in this, we have a double layer membrane. The double layer membrane is composed by phospholipids. So please, let's review about what is a phospholipid. Phospholipid is one of the main components of the cell membrane. Okay? Phospholipid. This is a phospholipid. If you see here in this, let me see if I have here. No. We have here a head here. We have the head of the molecule here one head and here two tails i'm going to draw here look at this this is the head of the phospholipid phospholipid listen to the name phospholipid phosphor this is the phosphorus this head is a molecule of phosphorus and that is phospholipid but they have two phospholipids here for one this is one lipid that is basically a fatty acid, fatty acid. You remember the classification of fats, we have fatty acids, triglycerides, and cholesterol. You remember in addition that the fatty acid is the monomer, is the smallest unit of a fat. So very small, fatty acid, that is fatty acid. And fatty acid, we have one tail, one fatty acid, and we have additional fatty acid. So we have two fatty acids in each phospholipid molecule. So molecule, what is the group of atoms or other molecules? So fatty acid plus fatty acid plus pho uh, phosphorus is going to form what we call the phospholipid. And the phospholipid is going to be uh, actually forming the double layer membrane. What is important about the phospholipid is that the head, that is the phosphorus, is hydrophilic 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 and the fat you already know covenant antinopolar fatty acids are going to be what hydrophobic hydrophobic phobic. you have phobias phobia 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 what is phobia phobia is you are scary you are actually rejected you don't want to face something right phobia hydro means water so the fatty acids do not like water they try to go away from the water hydrophilic philic means love uh, actually attraction that is philic hydrophilic is actually the head the phosphorus you okay with that yeah. yes following me yes yes, yes. hello yes yeah. yes okay so now I want just to I want just you to realize this. Look at this. This is very important. So we have a cell here. This is the nucleus. Okay. This is the nucleus. If you see here in this in this cartoon, this is a cell. This is the cell they are looking at. So and this is a piece of the cell membrane. This is a piece of the cell. I'm going to make it bigger.
Okay? So if you see here, we have a double layer membrane. So we have one phospholipid here and the opposite phospholipid here. Phospholipid, phospholipid. Now, why is that distribution? Just remember, the head is hydrophilic. They love water. They love water. And the fatty acids, they hate water. They hate water. Okay? So, what is happening here is this. This is the cell membrane. This is the outside of the cell membrane. This is the inside of the cell membrane. So, what happened outside? You have a lot of water, a lot of water in the outside of the, of the cell. And inside the cell, we have a lot of water too, as well. So we have water outside and water inside. Water outside and water inside. A lot of water inside, a lot of water outside. So what happened? When the phospholipid is coming, the heads are going to go towards the water outside. See, that's why this phospholipid is going to go towards the water, the head, oriented, because it's going to love the water. But at the same time, we have the phospholipid, the tail, who are going to hide from the water. So that's why they're going away from the internal water. And here, they're going away, these fatty acids, away from the water that is outside. And that is how it's going to form the, it's going to form the the what the double layer membrane okay with that is that clear yes okay so now question for the exam what are the most what are the most important components of the cell membrane the most important components of the cell membrane write down that what is the most what are i said are the most important components of the cell membrane. The most important components, the most important components of the cell membrane, number one, you can tell me, the phospholipids. Phospholipids. And the other one are the proteins. Proteins. Open eyes, open ears. Okay? Open eyes, open ears. So we have here, for example, this is a protein another protein, another protein. We have proteins everywhere, proteins, proteins. And we have the phospholipids. We have the phospholipids too. We have the phospholipids. In between, in between, they have cholesterol too. Cholesterol. This is cholesterol. But what is the main component, main components of the cell membrane? Phospholipids and proteins, period. You're going to find another element, yes. Which one? For example, cholesterol. Which one? For example, carbohydrates. You're going to find some carbohydrates too. But the main components of the cell membrane will be the phospholipids and proteins. Period. Period. Question. Why do we have cholesterol in the cell membrane? Why do we have cholesterol in the cell membrane? We have cholesterol in the cell membrane because the cell membrane is very wavy. Is kind of very flexible, very elastic, and the cholesterol, cholesterol are going to be uh, actually an element that is hard. It's going to be giving some consistence, consistence to the to the cell membrane. So cholesterol is fat. Cholesterol is fat. For the new students, I want you to put your hands under the table. Put your hands under the table. Can you? Robin, can you put that hand on your table? Right, you did it? Okay. Can you feel that gum under the table? Can you feel it? You feel, you, did you find the gum, Robin? No? Okay. All right. All right. So that, that consistency of the gum, that is exactly what is cholesterol. That is exactly, exactly what is cholesterol. Why I mentioned that in the past? Because I do autopsies before, necropsies, I open arteries and I can touch the, uh, the deposit of cholesterol in the arteries. And that is exactly the same as touching a gum that is stick under the table. Okay, so that was my first impression when I touched it first time. So that consistency, that 
uh, texture is going to give some rigidity to the cell membrane. It's not going to make it totally stiff, but it's going to give you some, some actually structure to the cell, collaborate to the structure. Do you okay with that? Yes. 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 Okay, perfect. So now this slide is, is important. Why? Because we will talk about the membrane transportation, the membrane transportation how the elements are going to pass from outside to inside of the cell. How they are going to pass. How they are going to pass. How they are going to pass. So uh, in the past, I didn't mention that yet because we didn't talk, but you already know about the membrane transportation. You need to refresh that. One of the membrane transportation will be the gas exchange, for example. Gas exchange. Gas exchange. You have oxygen here oxygen here so and the cells they need oxygen the oxygen are very tiny molecules so they can basically pass between the phospholipids without any problem because they are very small the carbon dioxide the oxygen they are going to be very small and it's like you have imagine these phospholipids like a people like a people like a crowd and actually somebody that is very small they want to pass from one side to another side. So it's so small, they said, excuse me, excuse me, I'm going to pass, I'm going to pass, nothing else. And that is called simple diffusion. Simple diffusion. Simple diffusion that we talked in previous course. Simple diffusion. Then we have the other molecules that are bigger. These molecules who are bigger will be, for example, the amino acids. The fatty acids are going to be the monosaccharides. The monosaccharides. Those are the monomers of the nutrients. And for this, they need to pass through a channel that is this protein. So what is this protein doing? Is the protein, this is the cell membrane. Look at me. This is the cell membrane, cell membrane, cell membrane, cell membrane here. And here we have one protein and another protein. Two proteins here, like this. This is the cell membrane. So this is outside, this is inside. Outside the cell, inside the cell outside the cell, inside the cell. Cell membrane and immersed in the cell membrane is the protein. Outside the cell, the amino acids are going to use the proteins like channels, like this. They are going to open. And then the open like this. This is outside. Like this. The, the nutrient, they are going to go this, like this. The two proteins are going to interact, open, they close, and then they allow the nutrient get into the cell. That transportation is called the Facilitate diffusion. Facilitate diffusion. This facilitate diffusion are going to happen basically in the intestines. That is how the nutrients are going to be absorbed by the cells of the intestine. And then they go to the, to the bloodstream. Simple diffusion is the gas exchange basically happening in the alveoli in the alveoli and the capillary at the level of the lungs. All right, so that is basically the, what they are doing these two things. And I take advantage of the picture to show you the phospholipids, the double layer membrane, the proteins that are immersed in the cell membrane. These proteins are actually like a gate, but these proteins are not there forever. These proteins are always dynamic. This protein can move over here, move there, going a little bit higher, a little bit down, destroy and replace. So the cell membrane is very dynamic structure. It's not like a, a frozen picture. It's always in movement. Okay? All right. All right, so what is the cytoplasm? Cytoplasm, cytoplasm, if we have a cell in very simple words, cytoplasm is going to be this everything that is in between the cell membrane and the nucleus, without including the nucleus. So that is basically the cytoplasm. So everything that is between the nucleus, fluid, whatever you find, mitochondria, lysosomal backwall, centrioles, whatever, reticulum endoplasmatic, endoplasmatic reticulum, whatever, ribosome, are going to be immersed in the cytoplasm, cytoplasm. 
Cytoplasm, as you can see, 99% of the components of the cytoplasm is water. It's a lot of water. It's a lot of water. Okay. All right, so uh, say, saying that, we have the cytoplasm, what we have immersed in there, endoplasmatic reticulum, ribosome, mitochondrial, Golgi apparatus, etc., peroxisomes, that's enzymes, lysosomes, vesicles, and centrioles. We are going to talk one by one. Okay, so now here we have uh, a plant cell, a plant cell, plant cell. All right, so let's go, what fruit do you like? Mango, pineapple, something that is juicy, banana, yeah, banana, orange, you want orange, okay? So the orange, the banana, the pineapple, the watermelon, whatever, all of them are going to be plants, correct? And the plants are going to have cells, are going to be composed by cells. So what is the difference from plant cells from animal cells? Very simple. You will see that now. So one is this. I want you to, I want you to observe here the nucleus. Where is the nucleus? Everybody says this is the nucleus. No, that is a, not the nucleus. The nucleus is here. That is the nucleus with the cell membrane, etc. with all the components that we have in, the, in our cells. There is some component chloroplast. We have, uh, they have more chloroplast than mitochondria. And the chloroplast is what is called the photosynthesis that is making energy for the plants from the sunlight. Anyhow, so now my next question is, where is the cytoplasmatic membrane or the double layer membrane? The double layer membrane is this. Can you see this thin white line here? Can you see that? Yes. Right? So that is the cytoplasmatic membrane. That is the cytoplasmatic membrane. All this white surrounding the cell. That is the cytoplasmatic membrane. Cytoplasmatic membrane, similar, double layer membrane, phospholipids, all right? But now, what is the difference? The difference is that this uh, cell uh, of uh, plant cell are going to be covered by an extra layer that is this very thick layer. Can you see this? Can you see this green, yeah. white, yes. thick layer? All right, so uh -huh. that is the cell wall. It's not called cytoplasmatic membrane, it's called the cell wall, cell wall. You see here, the cell wall here, cell wall. This cell wall, this cell wall that, other component is this portion, but I'm going to mention this as, as the main component, the cell wall. What is the composition of the cell wall? The composition of the cell wall is called cellulose. What is cellulose? Somebody can tell me. Dietary fiber. fiber. Exactly. The cellulose is what we call the fiber. That is what we call the fiber. The dietary fiber, as you said very well. Diana, Diana, right? I cannot see faces. Diana, was that, right? Anna. Anna, Anna. Thank you. Anna, Sunga. Thank you. Cellulose or fiber. That is the fiber that you eat. That is the fiber that you eat. That is the fiber that you eat. So why do you need to you need to eat fiber? Just make it uh, some application here. Well, how? Why do you need to eat fiber? What fiber is the bacteria in the colon? The bacteria right. in the colon. Yes, or the bacteria. Yes. What else? So fiber. What? What it is like at the end? Salad, right? Salad. Salad. Now. Yeah. In, in your lunch, I don't know if we, we take lunch or no. So, Andrea, you help me with that. So, if we take lunch. Yes, okay. lunch. Uh, all right, thank you. So, when you take your lunch, you take salad. So, so the lettuce, the tomato, everything. So, those are cell plants and they have cells and they are going to com be composed by cell walls. Cell walls, what are those? Is the fiber, dietary fiber. So, when you eat salad, you said, I eat fiber. So, why we need is fiber? So, you know, for example, this is one application. When you have high cholesterol, tell me, when you eat salad, you decrease your cholesterol, yes or no? Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Right? So why, how you decrease the cholesterol with the fiber? The fiber is like the fibers of a rope. You know a rope? Do you see a rope before? Okay. So let's imagine that what you eat as in, in your salad or everything is a group of fibers. This group of fibers is going to create like a rope of fibers. Now, I want you to do some experiment here. When I, when I want to put a rope sum, submerged or inside oil, totally covered by oil, then take the rope out and try to clean it up. Can you take all the oil from the rope? No, right? And the, and the fiber, you know, that is not digestible. The fiber is going to be eliminated by the feces. So that is how fiber is going to trap the oil, the cholesterol, and remove it from your body. Easy or not? Yes. Yeah. You got it? Excellent. So now you already know the fiber can decrease your levels of cholesterol. Okay? You okay with that? All right. Yes. Okay, so let's see. Uh, uh, all right. So for this, I'm going to mention a few things here. Oh, by the way, and when you eat the banana, or you eat the uh, orange or whatever fruit, mango, mango is, is coming to my head. So when you, when you eat it, you feel sweet, correct? Yes. Yes. Right. So when you are crushing the fruit, when you're eating the fruit, you are destroying the cell wall. You are breaking down the cell wall. You are destroying, obviously, the cell membrane. And you have here the back wall. This back wall, in let's put banana or orange, are going to have carbohydrates here. That is, when you eat, you destroy the back walls, and the back walls are going to release this sweet content. That is how the uh, you taste the uh sweetness of the other fruit. We have the Golgi apparatus, and the Golgi apparatus is where the proteins are going to get mature. All right, so, but I'm going to make a, a graphic in order to make it easy, but just give me a second. Here we have another cartoon where you have the phospholipids. Phospholipids outside, inside, so that is double layer membrane, so hydrophilic, hydrophobic, the fatty acids, two fatty acids each, each line is a fatty acid. And here we have proteins. This protein, imagine the protein, use your imagination. Proteins are doing up, down, right, left, moving, wavy cell membrane. That is how the cell membrane is actually shown. Cytoplasm is everything in between the cell membrane and the membrane of the nucleus. This is a membrane. So what do you think is this line? This line is a membrane that is going to form 360 degrees. It's like you have uh, uh, you have a balloon in front of you, touch it. What you touch, that is the cell membrane. Inside the balloon is not air, it's going to be the DNA and the nucleus. All right, so here we have the um, endoplasmatic reticulum. We are going to see that in a few moments, the ribosomes, the mitochondria. The mitochondria, so please, this is huge, okay? The mitochondria. The mitochondria are actually part of the cell who produce ATPs. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Right? We, we got that. So you have basically carbohydrates. They are going to get into glycolysis, right? Gly uh, glycolysis produce, remember, what is glycolysis? Glycolysis is the transformation of glucose into pyruvic acid. Just to refresh you, Pyruvic, so the, that is the, uh, 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 what is that? What they said? The glycolysis. And the glycolysis have, is going to happen in the cytoplasm. It's going to produce two ATPs. It's going to produce a reversible uh, pyruvic acid. So pyruvic acid, glucose, pyruvic acid, pyruvic acid, glucose. So it's, it's a reversible reaction and produce two ATPs, as I mentioned, and do not use oxygen, the glycolysis. So at the end, the, the end product of the glycolysis will be the pyruvic acid. 
the pyruvic acid then is going to enter, um, uh, is going to produce the acetoco, uh, uh, acetocoa. Please, I didn't say acetocholine, ACH. No, 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 no. That is totally different. This is, uh, um, this is uh, acetocoa. It's not acetocholine. Acetocholine is when you go to the bathroom, ACH. That is not. That is a neurotransmitter. What I'm talking about is the acetocoa. That is different to say acetocholine. Okay, it's totally different thing. So acetocoa that is being produced by the glucose are going to enter into the Krebs cycle. In the Krebs cycle, you are going to use oxygen at the difference of the glycolysis. Very important to remember that glycolysis is an anaerobic reaction. Anaerobic, no oxygen needed by glycolysis. But when they the acetocoa get into the Krebs cycle, into the into the mitochondria, you have oxygen. You need oxygen. And this oxygen is needed in order to make the reaction to produce ATPs. To produce ATP. And what is when where is happening the Krebs cycle? Happen in the mitochondria here, in the mitochondria. That is where they produce ATPs. ATPs. ATP. The ATPs they coming out to whatever you need to actually use for the ATPs. So now, why do we need oxygen? Why do you need to breathe? Why you need to breathe right now? Why you cannot stop? Why you you cannot stop breathing? Because you will die, right? If, without oxygen, you will die. Why we need oxygen? We need oxygen because the cells need oxygen to make reactions to produce ATPs. The acetoCoA coming acetoCoA enter into the mitochondria in order to happen the reactions to produce ATP they need oxygen it's like you go to your car and your car you turn on the car to make combustion you need oxygen without oxygen the fire will not or the combustion will not occur so that is exactly the same what happened with the mitochondria so the mitochondria these they need to, this oxygen in order to produce ATPs okay so that is why do we need oxygen? That's why you need oxygen. Now, another question, why do we need water? Why do we need water? Why do we need water? Water is everywhere. 60% of your body is water. And water is very important. Why do we need to drink water? Why you need water? Why? Because water is the medium where all these chemical reactions are going to happen. Without water, those chemical reactions to produce ATP will not occur. So that's why you need water. So now you know why do we need oxygen to produce ATPs? Why do we need water? Because the reactions to produce ATPs happen in the water. If you don't, if you don't have water, you cannot produce energy. You okay with that? Yeah. Now, the mitochondria are going to be in number variable. The mitochondria are going to be like the small factories. They are going to provide energy, right? For example, the, the one of the organs who has more functions, one a big number of functions is the liver, the liver. Imagine a liver and the liver have, you know, 512 functions, 512 functions. Imagine a factory, a factory that produce some items. But this factory, instead of produce one or two, produce 512 objects, uh, different, different objects. It's a big factory, a very elaborate factory. And this factory that they produce 512 different, uh, different items, in order to do that, they need a lot of energy, a lot of energy. So that's why the cells of the liver, they have a lot of mitochondria. A lot number of mitochondria. Other parts of the cell of the body they have less number of mitochondria because the need of energy is lower. It's like the engines. So big factory deliver 512 functions, big number of mitochondria in the nucleus, in the sorry, in the in the cells. Okay, all right. So that is about lysosomes are going to be basically uh, vesicles that are inside the cells 
that are going to contain enzymes. These enzymes, what is doing, this is a cell, for example, this is, a, this is let's make a, a neutrophil. Neutrophil is actually, this is the nucleus. This is nucleus, it's like a little bit ugly nucleus, but this is a nucleus. And they have here some lysosomes. What happened, the bacteria is coming and the, the neutrophils is moving. And they say, oh, bacteria, I want to eat you. So the bacteria is being eaten and the bacteria is inside, get inside the mitochondria of the, of the white cell, the, the neutrophil. And that these lysosomes are going to come close to the bacteria and release the enzymes and they are going to be destroyed. Okay, that is the lysosomes. The centrioles are going to mention later on because it's part of the cell division. Okay, so for now, I'm going to make a summary of everything that I said for the third time. So please, if somebody can tell me about the breaks time, tell me please, because I lost my sense of time right now. So sorry for the for all the inconvenience for the vaccine, but I, it's done, so it's only one time. Thank you so much. All right, so let's start. Uh, okay, so I will draw a cell here. And I'm going to draw here a nucleus. The nucleus I draw it like this because the nucleus has openings. What is a nucleus? A nucleus is like a balloon. Balloon. Just think about the balloon. Touch the balloon. That is a cell membrane. But the balloon is having actually openings. Where oh, That is where the DNA is going to go out from the cell. Okay, so let's, let's, let's keep going here. Here we have the endoplasmatic reticulum. This is the endoplasmatic reticulum. The endoplasmatic reticulum. Endoplasmatic reticulum. Endoplasmatic reticulum. Endoplasmatic reticulum. The ER. Endoplasmatic reticulum. Endoplasmatic reticulum. Endoplasmatic reticulum. We have the endoplasmatic reticulum. What is that for? Endoplasmatic reticulum. Okay, here in this side, we are going to have the Golgi apparatus. 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 Golgi apparatus, Golgi, Golgi, Golgi apparatus. We have the Golgi apparatus. Okay, so let's start. Here we have the DNA. This is the DNA. The DNA is going to be a double helix coil, correct? You follow me? Okay? Yeah, yes. Now, yes. The, now the DNA you know, is containing about 24,000 genes. For example, a gene will be pieces of the DNA. From here to here, all these structures are going to be a gene. Just remember, the DNA is like, like spiral stairs. Go to a spiral, a spiral stairs. Go to the spiral stairs. Climb the spiral stairs. Right, so the steps are going to be the bases where it's going to be the adenine, the thymine, the cytosine, and the guanine. Remember the bases of the DNA, perfect. That is bioscience. Okay, so now, so what happened is that each gene, each piece of the gene, they have information based on this codification of the sequence of ATCG. Now the sequence is going to give a codification for a different protein. So protein are going to be basically the result of the recipes of the genes. Conclusion, gene is a protein, yes. It's going to give a protein, yes. Gene is the recipe for a protein, yes. It's a recipe for carbohydrates, no. It's a recipe for love, for fat, no. It's a, a recipe, the gene is a recipe for proteins, yes. Now, you are in your house, you are in your room, and you are looking what happened in the cell. 
So the wall, the windows need to be repaired. The, the, the walls are going to be the cytoplasmatic membrane. And the windows, they need repair. And the windows represent a protein. So the proteins are not going to last forever. They are going to have a time of lasting. They can last a few months, a few days, a few years, and they are going to decay, but they need to be replaced, like the window in your, in your, in your room. So what happened? That window is a protein, and the protein is here immersed in the gene. So what happened with the DNA? So we have one gene that is needed. So instead to be coiled, the DNA are going to be uncoiled, the DNA like this. Like this, see? It's going to uncoil, showing the ACTG, the codification. So this is the gene that represents the repair of the window or the protein that is in the cell membrane, for example. So that uncoil are going to be copied by the RNA, the RNA, the RNA, the RNA messenger, the RNA messenger. The RNA messenger are going to come and they are going to sit here in between, here. And it's going to copy exactly the sequence of the bases, ATCG, whatever sequence it is. Once is already copied the uh, the 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 recipe for a protein i'm going to put it here what happened the dna is going to be closed again so from this uncoil they are going to turn coil again so it's already closed because you already copy the recipe it's going to be closed now this process is called the what? Translation. Transcription. Good we'll try. Transcription. That process of the RNA to copy the gene is called the transcription. It's called the transcription. Then what happened? What happened is the RNA messenger after the transcription they go to the endoplasmatic reticulum here. Endoplasmatic reticulum. Now, here what we have, what happened is here that in the cytoplasm are going to be what? Are going to be amino acids. Amino acids. All the 20 amino acids that you know are going to be floating in the cytoplasm. Floating in the cytoplasm. Floating, floating, floating. Where is coming this amino acid from your diet? You eat proteins, proteins are going to break down amino acids, amino acids go into the cell through the uh, facilitate diffusion, and they are going to be floating in the cytoplasm. The RNA messenger is like you are going to your kitchen and you make a list of the ingredients because you want to have, you need to prepare something delicious, right? So that recipe, you are the RNA messenger. Imagine yourself, you are the RNA messenger. You need a list of ingredients in order to prepare to cook that protein, that delicious plate. So, but you don't have all the ingredients. So where do you go? You go to Whole, whole Foods or you go to uh, whatever, Safeway or, or another store and you go to the store to find the ingredients. What is the store? The cytoplasm. The cytoplasm, they have all the ingredients floating there. And what happened? This DNA messenger who have the recipe are going to bring the ingredients as the sequence show in the in the RNA messenger. They are going to bring the recipe and they are going to form like one amino acid after one amino acid, amino acid, amino acid, amino acid, amino acid, all together amino acid. And what they are going to form? They are going to form the protein. Why? Because what is a protein? Protein is a sequence of amino acids. And that is how it's going to produce what we call what? The primary protein. Primary protein. Primary protein. And this actually formation of protein is going to be happens through a process called the translation. Translation. We okay with that? Yes. Yes. All right. So what is happening first? 
transcription or translation? You already know transcription. How to remember that? Transcription, C. Translation, L. Who is first, the C or the L? It's going to be the C. C of copy. C, copy, C, transcription. Translation will be after when you are going to form the protein. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Another thing that you need to remember is this. If you remember here, we are going to have some structures. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, it's the opposite. Uh, okay. I'm going to put it here. Here. There are going to be some elements that are going to be here. I'm going to show you in, the, in this picture. See this? Can you see this? So this is the endoplasmatic reticulum. Here is where it's going to have the RNA messenger. They are going to go into the endoplasmatic reticulum and they are going to bring all the amino acids. If you see here, the endoplasmatic reticulum have two components. Here we have the smooth endoplasmatic reticulum and here we have the rough endoplasmatic reticulum. So why is the difference? What are these dots? These small like granules here, those are the ribosomes. Uh, I'm going to put them in red. Because, uh, ribosomes are going to be the ribosomes. All these red dots are going to be ribosomes. Ribosomes, ribosomes. I said ribosomes. What are the ribosomes doing here? These ribosomes, when you go to Safeway, you have a cart where you put all the ingredients. The cart is coming to you to complete the ingredient. Who are these carts? The carts are the RNA, the sorry, the ribosomes. The ribosomes are having the role to bring with like a cart all these ingredients to complete your ingredient, your recipe. So that is the ribosomes. Once the protein is formed here, the protein is formed here, going to put it in some color that we can see it. Uh, let me see here like this. So the protein that is here, that is the primary protein. Remember the primary protein is like a, like a, um, like a line, like a line. And the primary protein are going to need the ribosomes in order to bring the ingredients to the recipe. Once the primary protein is formed, we don't need any more the ribosomes. So that's why the second part of the endoplasmatic reticulum do not have the ribosomes anymore because we don't need it anymore. So the primary protein then is going to go the double pleat, that is the secondary, that is going to be the secondary protein, the secondary pro, oh God, what happened with my, the secondary protein, that is the folding, the alpha and the beta, that is not active yet. Then it's going to turn, it's going to continue this direction, and they are going to form the tertiary protein, the 3D protein. The some of them are going to be uh, functional, some of them, because functional means they have a shape. The protein without a shape do not have any function. It's like the keyhole of your door. Okay? All right. So now, here we have... Uh, then what we have, they are going to get the secondary, they got the tertiary they, and the quaternary protein, quaternary protein, quaternary protein are going to be in the Golgi apparatus. In the Golgi apparatus, what is going to do is to mature the protein. What does it mean mature the protein? To be, be, to be totally functional. What does it mean to be totally functional? They have the shape, totally shape. For example, I can draw a protein like this. See, the shape of the protein. And you know that is the keyhole of your, of your house. If you need to have the exactly keyhole in order to, uh, the key, the same shape of the keyhole in order to open the door. So that is what happens. So I'm going to represent here, for example, very a little bit gross here, the shape of the protein in the cell membrane. Okay, so this is the cell membrane and this is the shape of the protein. So I'm going to give you one example now. What example I want to give you is the insulin. We have insulin, 
and the insulin have this shape. Yes, use your imagination. This shape. That is the insulin. So the insulin, what it's doing, is coming to the protein, matching the same shape, because the protein is functional, quaternary already. Without that shape, the insulin is not going to work. It cannot open the door of your house. So the insulin is coming, matching the shape of that protein, because it's already functional after transcription, translation, and what it's doing is knock, knock the door. And what happened? After that, this is going to open the door for the glucose. That is a function of the insulin. So if the glucose are going to get into the cell, right, based of the insulin, if the protein is do not have the shape, the right shape, you can have insulin, but the insulin cannot open the door because you have the shape of your key is different from the keyhole. And you cannot open the doors for the glucose. That is diabetes type 2. Insulin resistance. And that's what you need to remember all this process of transcription, translation, and the functional proteins. What are, to recap here, the nucleus, we have the transcription coming from the DNA, copied by the RNA messenger. The RNA messenger go to the cytoplasm through the red endoplasmatic reticulum. They are going to bring the, uh, the amino acids to complete the sequence of the recipe, producing the primary, secondary, tertiary, go to the Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus is, are going to finish this shape of the protein, and then this protein go to the cell membrane. Stay there, waiting until the insulin is coming, open the door to the glucose can come. That is one of the main functions. You have hormones, hormones like uh, growth hormone, uh, FSH, LH, ACTH, that, uh, 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 the TSH. All these hormones are going to be exactly the same. Insulin is an hormone. So all these hormones they have, they need they have they they are they are like a key and they need a, they need to open a specific doors they cannot open every door so that's why it's important to have the proteins the shape that they need at the end is that clear or not yes or oh, you know what i can feel that i i don't know if i will we have the energy to say the same in the more at night <laughs> anyhow <laughs> but wait any question please No. I'm, I have a weird question. No. If the cell can't get the insulin, if it's insulin resistant, and how, how does the... I have a question. If the, cell, if the cell doesn't have... If it's insulin resistant, and insulin is the one that opens the cell to get the glucose in there, and if it's insulin resistant, how does it get the glucose? The glucose, what is... is like, okay, the, the insulin is like... A, uh, like a, a how you call mail mailman mail post how you call the person who deliver mail mailman mailman okay the mailman the mailman is the insulin okay mm, yeah and mm. they have a package the package is the glucose yeah now the protein is going to be the rim the door the doorbell doorbell or bell door the doorbell right mm, yeah so you ring the bell. That is the protein interacting with the insulin. Mm -hmm. And somebody's opened the door. It's a different protein. They open the door, they deliver the package, you close the door, and the mailman go, they don't go into your house, right? So they're going to keep delivering somewhere else. So that is exactly what is happening with the with the insulin. So your question is the insulin attached to a protein, ring the bell, and that produces a reaction. That reaction is to make some other proteins open. Yeah. And that is how the glucose is going to get in. And if it does, if it's insulin resistant. Exactly. If, then... it, if it's like you trying to ring the bell and the bell is not ringing. So nobody can hear your, your calling. So nobody will open the door. Okay, because cells need glucose. So exactly. How exactly. else can it get in there then? How? how do That's what I said. 
open the door. The open the door is another protein that is opening. Mm -hmm. It's like a, you have one protein here, another protein here, and the proteins are going to open. Yeah. And that is how the glucose gets into the cell. Okay? Oh, okay. No, no, but what is your question? What I don't understand. I, I'm just saying, so insulin is not working. The guy presses the doorbell. Oh. And no answering. So the, the door cannot open for glucose. Then how do cells get glucose since that's the main important? No. All right, so that is your bioscience. If you cannot get uh, uh, energy from the glucose, what you're going to use? Okay. Insulin? Your proteins? No, we use the fats. Fats. But okay. put a note on the side and remember that we're talking about the beta oxidation. Okay. The beta oxidation is good and bad. Good because produce five times more ATPs than a glucose, but produce ketone bodies. And ketone bodies is very acid. They can kill the patient. So that is what is bad about that side of the reaction. Okay? Is that okay? So uh, that is part of bioscience. I'm not getting yeah. deeper on that yet. Yeah. Because it's, but thank you for that, uh, Christina. Okay. All right. So let's have 10 minutes break. I think it's deserved. And we are going to complete the session with the tissues. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit more to close to make a recap about the cell, about the cells. I hope that this is a, a review that make you realize how much you learn in the past and how to basically start to apply all your information. Okay, so we okay with that? So 10 minutes, I will see you at 1.10. Any question? This is the moment. Question, question, no question? No? Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna correct Gigi, right? Yeah. It's based okay, on 60, 60 points. Yeah. But after class, not now, Mr. Otis. <clears throat>
Hello. Yes. Okay. Um, all right, so let's continue with uh, our lecture. Any questions so far, please? No. Everything is clear? So that co actually correlates with the uh, bioscience, right? <laughs> and yeah. as you can tell, uh, probably uh, for our new students, we actually make a summary of all what we did in bioscience plus uh, correlation with a uh, with anatomy physiology. Okay, all right. Uh, let me see who is uh, Joy. Are you there, Miss Joy? Ms. Joy, are you there? Highly. Yes. Uh, tell me your comment about the first part. Was clear? Yes, it's clear. Okay. Yeah. Alejandra Rocha. Oh, uh, it's clear? Was clear? Yes, everything was just a review on bioscience. Excellent. And the cells. Okay. okay. And Lee, Lee, tell me your opinion. Are you satisfied with the with the review of this part? Yeah, it's the same with the uh, the uh, another professor teach us. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right. So let's continue. All right. So here we have uh, the cell and their functions. I want just you to remember what are proteins. Proteins are everything, basically. You, if you remember, proteins are hormones. Are mostly of the mostly most of the hormones are proteins. Which hormones we are talking about? We are talking about the uh, growth hormone, the prolactin. We have the TSH. We have the ACTH. We have the FSH. The LH. Uh, and actually, uh, we have the oxytocin, the ADH, are hormones, okay? So those hormones are proteins. Another, so another uh, proteins are, for example, the albumin. The albumin that is the uh, universal transporter of actually in the blood. Albumin transport everything. When you absorb Listen, when you absorb amino acids from the intestines into the bloodstream or fatty acids or uh, carbohydrates, they're always being transported by albumin. That is a protein. Who produces the protein is the liver. Liver produces a lot of protein, of albumin. Albumin is a protein, okay? And the cells of the liver produce the albumin through the transcription translation, primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary protein. Once the protein is produced by the cell, they have many, may, they can go different ways. One is the, the protein produced by the cell, the quaternary protein, can replace proteins of the cell itself. All these proteins are, for example, hormones, they can go out of the cell to go to the target organ. Another proteins we have, for example, the acetylcholine, acetylcholine, the ACH, that is a protein produced by whom? By the nerves. The nerves are cells that have the translation, the transcription. And same the adrenaline, the dopamine, glutamate, the GABA, noradrenaline, so serotonin. All these are proteins. More proteins. You want more proteins? Let's do proteins enzymes those enzymes who are going to make uh, uh, the reactions of all, <coughs> chemical, all, all the chemical reactions in the body these enzymes that are accelerators of the reactions are proteins oh what happened okay those are proteins more proteins proteins are going to be the receptors the receptors that are in the, in the cells. Example, I was giving you the example of the insulin, the receptors, the insulin look for a receptor in the cell membrane. Those receptors are going to be 
uh, are going to be proteins. Okay? All right. So protein synthesis, that is one of the function of the, of the, of the cell. What is synthesis? Synthesis, please, please, every, in the questions, in the exams, are many questions talking about synthesis. Synthesis means, in other words, just translate that into production. Synthesis means production of something. You okay with that? So you don't have problems to, when you go, when you're going to read the word synthesis, you don't have problems. You translate in your mind, it means production. So production of proteins. That is one of the function in this case of the of the cells. We okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then we have the DNA, the RNA, and you know that we have the adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, and uracil. Uracil is characteristic of the RNA. RNA. You remember that DNA has A A T C G. A, G, T, C, T. So all these are the DNA. But the RNA do not have the timing. Instead of that, they have the uracil. That is the characteristic of the RNA. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Question for the exam. Properties of the DNA. The DNA presence are going to uh, actually uh, be a make able to make the cell reproduce. So, for example, you have mitosis, that is the cell division, and the cell division are going to do, are going to produce two daughter cells. These two daughter cells, they have the DNA, as well as, uh, uh, same, same as the mother. So, we have the mother here, here is the mother, and they have two cells, daughter cells. They have the same content of DNA. How is that happen? Because these mother cells are going to be, before that cell division, are going to duplicate the DNA. Instead to have two N, they have now four N. And this four N, when the cell divide, two N go for one cell, and the other two N go to the other cell. The mother cell disappear, of course, and the results are going to be the formation of two daughter cells. That is the mitosis, cell replication. Be okay with that? Yes. yes. Okay. Direct synthesis of proteins, thank you, uh, uh, are going to store information. Uh, actually, the DNA store information. Those are the genes. How many genes we have? 24,000 genes. Okay? And mutation. Mutation is when the recipe is changing. The bases, what are the bases? The bases are ATCG. ATCG. So those are the the spiral stairs, that is the DNA, comparing to the DNA, the steps are the bases. What are those bases? The ATCG. So that is what the sequence, different sequence, produce a different recipe for a different protein. And this mutation means that they are going to change the, the code, the sequence of this ATCG. So... <clears throat> It's like the recipe is telling you, instead of salt, you're going to put sugar. What are the result of that dish is going to be totally different. So that protein means that it's going to lose the function. Because it's the sequence of the ATCG that is going to give the shape, the type of sequence, different sequences are going to give different shape of the protein. If you have a mutation, that means that instead to have A in the sequence, you have T, for example, or C, you have, instead of C, you have A, right? So that is a mutation. So that means the recipe of the gene is changing. So the protein are going to be not functional. For the, it's not going to have the function that should be have. You okay with that? So this actually for that are going to be question for the exam. The role of the RNA, transcription and translation, all news, right? This is all news. We already know what is a transcription and what is translation. Transcription happen inside the nucleus, and the translation happen in the cytoplasm, in the endoplasmatic reticulum. 
So that is how this is going to be uncoil the DNA to copy by the RNA messenger. This is the RNA messenger. Messenger. This RNA messenger, they go out from the nucleus through the uh, towards the endoplasmatic reticulum. And here in the cytoplasma already are going to produce that translation. Okay. So yes. here we have the sequence of the DNA. For example, you have this is let's suppose this is a gene. This is a codification. The codification, just to go a little bit more deeper, is this. For example, ACG is a codification. This codification is a code that is telling you that is going to receive one amino acid. Let's make a leucine, one amino acid. Another sequence will be CGT. That is a code for another amino acid that would be the glycine, for example. We have another sequence, the AAT, that could be the, uh, the code to call the tyrosine, another type of amino acid. We have TCG, another code. This code is going to call the tryptophan, for example, another amino acid. All right, so that is the code. So now, if you change the code, for example, instead to be C is going to be A, that is going, that code are going to be code for something else. It's not going to be for the same amino acid. So the sequence are going to be changed. That is called mutation. Okay? And just remember, when you have the primary strand, they are going to be a complementary strand on the, on the RNA messenger. This is, a, this is the DNA, and the RNA messenger is going to translate that. A are going to translate in T. C is going to be in G, G in T, in C, and CG. So, for example, you have here the DNA. DNA is A, T, C, G, for example. G, T, whatever you want. So the other side of the DNA is going to be T, is going to be A, is going to be G, is going to be C, is going to be C, is going to be A. Just remember, A, T and T. Just to remember that A is going to be always be T, or T is going to be with A, A, T, and T. And the other one is the CG, how to remember? C, another C, but it's very similar with the G. See the similarity? Just to remember. So every time that you have C in one side, you have G. Every time you have G, you have C. If every time you have A, you have T. Every time you have T, you have A. T, A. We okay with that? Yes. So tell me one thing. This sequence B is RNA or DNA? RNA. 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 Very good. Why? Because you see the U here. And the DNA do not have U, uracil. The one who contain the uracil is the RNA. All right, so let's talk about meiosis and mitosis just to finish this. The, oh, God. Okay. All right, so um, mitosis, very simple. We are going to very simple do it. This is mitosis. This is meiosis. Mitosis, we have the mother cell, the mother cell. Mitosis that is going to be 2N and 2N meiosis 2. Mitosis then is going to do is going to give two daughter cells, 2N and 2N. The meiosis is going to do, again, the same thing, 2N and 2N. But they are going to have another division. So here's where the mitosis stops. Here the mitosis stops, but the meiosis is going to continue. And this meiosis, after this, that is similar to mitosis, are going to divide again, but instead to give two daughter cells with 2N, are going to give one cell, two cells each with N chromosomes each. So they have four, four cells with haploid number of cells. Haploid means half. This D2N is diploid or diploid. Diploid, diploid two, die, die two, two N, 46 chromosomes. Here we have the haploid is half. Half is N chromosomes or 23 chromosomes. 
these are the examples of the spermatozoids and the ovum. So, conclusion here. When you cut your skin, when you cut your skin, you cut your skin, you, you're not going to have the boon for the rest of your life. What is doing the body? The body needs to replace the cells with new cells. The old cells who are being destroyed are going to be replaced by new cells. Through what? Through mitosis. So basically, all the replacement, the regeneration of the of the of the the all, all the regeneration are going to happen with mitosis. So all your body, all your body, you you cut your skin, you have a, a, a broken bone, you have uh, injury in your muscle, you have injury in the kidney, in the liver, in the spleen, in the lungs, whatever, in the mouth, your mu mucus, in the respiratory tract, in the genitalia area. So all these mucus, all these areas are going to be replaced using mitosis, period. So that is where happens mitosis in your body. Meiosis is happening only in the testicles and the ovaries. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Yes. So meiosis, in conclusion, are going to be sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction. And mitosis is somatic reproduction. Okay, so let's keep moving. So the, the components of the mitosis, just to mention, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Uh, I'm not going to ask you what happened in the prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Just remember the stages. Prophase is when they are going to, descend, uh, are going to disappear, the, the nuclear, nuclear membrane and the, and the DNA, Double, double helix are going to uh, produce the chromosomes. That is the cell division. Metaphase, when you have the chromosomes actually uh, uh, already uh, produced, they are going to duplicate, the duplicate, and they are going to basically uh, align in the central portion of the, in the central portion of the cell. Here is the metaphase. Then they are going to separate. When they duplicate the chromosomes, they are going to have the centrioles. Remember the centrioles that I told you are going to talk later? Is the centrioles. The centrioles are going to migrate to the, to the poles, to the extremes of the cell. And these centrioles are going to be the cowboys. The cowboys. Why cowboy? cowboys? Why? Because the, the chromosome will be like the cows and the centrioles will be like the cowboy. And what these are these lines? These lines are the lace that are going to, each cowboy is going to lace a chromosome. And what he's doing? Are going to pull. When they pull, they are going to migrate to the, to the extremes of the cell, initiating the cell division. And that is going to be the anaphase. And then when they are totally divided, that is going to be called the telophase. Telophase. Telophase is when the, see, the nuclear membrane, can you see the nuclear membrane here? Still but they are going to disappear. And then when you go to the telophase, the nuclear mem the chromosomes are going to turn into DNA again, into DNA, and form the nuclear membrane. And that is about the division. Similar happen in the meiosis. In, me in mitosis, we have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. In meiosis, we have prophase, anaphase, Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then again, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So that's why meiosis sometimes is called the double mitosis. The difference between mitosis and meiosis is that mitosis produces at the end two daughter cells with 46 chromosomes, two N, diploid. And the meiosis has double mitosis that the end result will be Four, four cells who contain 23 chromosomes, haploid number of chromosomes, ovules and spermatozoids. You okay? You okay? Yes. yes. All right. Yes. So let's talk about the transportation uh, because I need, what time is it, please? Tell me, please. Oh my God. It's 
Okay, so let's do 10 minutes about this. All right, so we have the active transportation, uh, we have the, uh, the, sorry, the membrane transportation. The membrane, transpo membrane transportation are going to be, li listen to this, is how things are going to transport passing through the cell membrane. That is the membrane transportation. They can go from outside to inside, or they can go from inside to outside. That is the membrane transportation. We have two types of transportation, the passive and the active. The passive are going to be no use of energy, no use of energy. And active is going to use, yes, are going to use energy. The passive trans transportation are going to be, if this is the cell membrane, this is outside, this is inside, inside. So here we have outside the cell, here is the nucleus somewhere. And here we have, for example, oxygen, 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 oxygen. And here we have a little bit of oxygen. So what happened? Because the molecules are so tiny, they are going to pass very fast, very easy through the phospholipids. This is the phospholipids. This is our, the real phospholipids. They are going to pass directly because they are so tiny. And that is called a simple diffusion. So I'm not explaining as... I'm sorry, can you, can you repeat that again? That last part? Yeah, who, who is saying that, please? This is Denisha. Okay, Denisha. Okay. So... Uh, for all right, so hopefully you can you give me ten minutes after two, please. Everybody, sure. yeah. fine. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's suppose we're going to explain again. Here we have a room. Let's suppose that each of you you are in a room. You are here. You are here. This is you. And this is me. This is me. Okay. And now look at this. I'm going to turn a cigarette, a smoke. I'm going to smoke. I'm going to start smoking. Tell me, at that main, at the, at, uh, after one second, two seconds, can you smell my cigarette to you? When Can you smell the cigarette smoke? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. No. <laughs> Let's no, suppose no. this is a big room. Let's oh, suppose this I is a big room. So I turn on my, my cigarette. Can you smell right away? No, 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 no. No, right. Perfect. Okay. So now, I am still smoking, and actually, I'm. You cannot see me because I cover by smoke, and I totally invisible now. <laughs> now you you are going to go out and come back in five minutes. In five minutes, you will enter to a room and you will smell the smoke. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Why yes. is that? Because this smoke that was high concentration here. I start to diffuse all the room. Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that is what we call the universal law. Universal law. The universal law. The universal law means that all is all everything should be in equal concentration. Equal concentration. Equal concentration. That is the law of the universe. Equal concentration. This equal concentration means that if at the beginning was here high concentration in this space, everything should be equal concentration. So the amount of smoke that you have after five minutes coming back into the room will be the same here, 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 because the smoke is going to be evenly distributed into the room. You okay with that? Yes, thank you. Yes. Okay. No, I didn't finish. Now. Here we have high concentration, high concentration, and they are going to move to areas that was actually low concentration, low concentration here. So that's why this smoke is going to go from high to low concentration. You okay with that? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So now here we have, this is the cell membrane, and this is outside, inside. Outside, when you breathe in, there is a lot of oxygen into your blood. So there's mm -hmm. oxygen, but inside the cell, you have a little bit of oxygen. So high concentration here, low concentration is going to follow the universal law or the law of the universe. 
So they go from high concentration, they are going to diffuse to low concentration. That is how the oxygen is getting into the cell. That is called simple diffusion. You okay with that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. So now, this pathway, they go from high to low concentration, is called, is going to be called down the concentration gradient. You need to remember that. Down the concentration gradient. What is down the concentration gradient? Again, when the substance go from high, high to, low. to low concentration. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. This is a must. This is open eyes, open ears, 10 times. Down the concentration gradient means that the substance go from high concentration to low concentration. Down concentration gradient is going to be called towards the concentration gradient. Ah. It's going, the other way to call is towards, towards the concentration gradient. So you can call in both ways, down the concentration gradient or actually towards the concentration gradient. We okay with that? And remember, the passive, because of this universal law, you don't need energy. There is no energy needed. That's why it's called passive. You okay with that? Okay. So the best example is the gas exchange. Gas exchange. Gas exchange. You breathe in oxygen, the oxygen gets into the cells by simple diffusion. You breathe out carbon dioxide, that is going to be gas exchange too. This carbon dioxide that is a waste product or product of the of the Krebs cycle, that is where it's coming from, the carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is like your car. Your car is going to run. Why? Because you're going to ignite, make combustion of the fuel that is the glucose, the equivalent, with the oxygen react in order to produce energy to move the car. The energy will be the ATP. And the car do not produce a smoke. It's the waste product of the combustion. This carbon dioxide, every single cell produces this. And they are going to go to the blood and they go out from the body through the lungs, through simple diffusion. So the carbon dioxide are going to come out because they have a lot of carbon dioxide here in the cell. And in the blood, they have low carbon dioxide when you breathe in. So high concentration goes out to the blood because that is going to eliminate the carbon dioxide. And then you eliminate that by, the, by your breathing. Be okay with that? Yes. Okay. Another uh, another passive uh, passive uh, uh, transportation. Another passive transportation will be the facilitate diffusion. So the first one we talked was the simple diffusion. Simple diffusion equal to say gas exchange. Okay. Simple diffusion gas exchange. Now let's talk about the facilitate diffusion. In the facilitate diffusion, the, here we have the cell membrane. But you have proteins here, one protein and another protein. Remember, passive, we are talking about the facilitate diffusion. And these are going to use proteins. They are not going to pass through the cell membrane by itself because the molecules are a little bit bigger, like the amino acids, like the glucose, like the fatty acids. So they are going to come here. This is the cell membrane. This is the protein. One protein, one another protein produce like a gate. So outside the glucose coming here, the gate are going to open. And then they are going to, they are going to do this. Open the gate. See the pain is the glucose. And then close and go inside. And that is through a concentration gradient. So they are going to go high levels of glucose. Let's make glucose, 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 glucose here. Glucose, and we have a little bit of glucose here, but we have a lot of glucose here. So that is going to pass through the membrane here, through the proteins. When this is, remember, there is no energy needed. Why? Because they are using the universal law that is going to make the, uh, the element, glucose, fatty acids, amino acids, 
are going to pass through facilitate diffusion. So facilitate diffusion, where it's happening more, is in the intestines. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. So facilitate diffusion are going to use the concentration gradient. So it's going to go down or towards the concentration gradient. The concentration gradient. You okay with that? Okay. Now we have simple diffusion. That is simple diffusion. That is one of the uh, passive transportation. We have what we have the facilitate diffusion. That is one of the no energy needed, as you already know. And the and the third one, very important, is the osmosis. <laughs> Why you you're boring? You're boring. Thank you. Hello. Oh, sorry, I forgot to. Sorry. Okay, osmosis. Osmosis is very important. So, what is osmosis? Osmosis is the typical is this. Look at that. Here we have a beaker, and we have here some. Uh, I'm going and go like this and like this. Uh, uh, I'm going to go something like that. Okay, like that. So, this is water. All this level is water. Okay, water. We okay with that? Yes. And then we have molecules here. One, two, three molecules. And now I'm going to have in the other side, I'm going to take have many more molecules. So where is more concentrated? More concentrated will be B over A. Correct? Yes or no? Yes. This line that you see here is the semi-permeable permeable membrane. Semi-permeable membrane. This semi-permeable membrane is called semi because the membrane are going to allow only few uh, small size of molecules passing. Who is that? The water. The water is very small. But if the molecules are big enough, are big, more bigger than amino acid proteins, amino acids, sorry, bigger than amino acid fatty acids or glucose, they are not going to be able to pass through the membrane. But you remember, we have the universal law again. The universal law means that you have to, you need to have everything in equal, in equilibrium, equal concentrations. But here, B is high concentration, higher than A through the, and in between, we have the semi-permeable membrane. So what is doing the body? The body, what is going to do is to make pass water from the low concentration to the high concentration. So at the end, what you're going to have is this. You have high content of water and a little bit of water on the other side. Why? Because the water is trying to dilute the high concentration in order to have, at the end, equal concentration. It's like you have a tea with sugar. You have, uh, you have four spoons 10 spoons of sugar in your tea. It's too sweet. So put more water and then taste it again. It's going to be less concentrate of sugar or not. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that is the osmosis. When, when is happening the osmosis? Osmosis is happening. Who is, who is having semi-permeable membrane? The one who contains semi-permeable mem membrane are every single cell of your body. Every single cell of your body. So the, the cytoplasmatic membrane or cell membrane or double layer membrane, that is the semi-permeable permeable membrane. Are you okay with that? Yes. yes. Okay. So we have here endocytosis. Endo means inside. So everything that is coming inside the cell is called endocytosis. Endocytosis, everything that is coming into the cell. So by cell mem by membrane transportation. If they eat something solid, that is phagocytosis. Example, bacteria. Pinocytosis. Pinocytosis is when the, when the uh, fluids get into the cell. So phago, solid. Pino, liquid. So liquid getting into the cell is called pinocytosis. It's when you are drinking, drinking or pinocytosis. You eat a piece of chicken, phagocytosis, okay? Exocytosis is the opposite. 
exocytosis is when somebody, something is coming out, exo, ex, outside, outside of the cell. All right, so let's talk about, oh God, my God, give me 10 minutes, please, okay? All right, are you familiar with the isotonic, hypertonic, and hypotonic? Yes. Yeah. We, you want to skip it? We can. Okay. Everybody? No, 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 that's after that. All right, so, no, no. Let's go to the isotonic, hypertonic, hypotonic very quick. Here we have a cell. We have another cell here. And we have another cell here. Here we have the nucleus with the DNA, nucleus DNA, nucleus DNA. This is outside of the cell, outside. So all this you see here is outside of the cell. So we have molecules here, one, two, three, just not make it longer, inside the cell. And the, sa the same molecule, same uh, type of molecule, type of molecules are going to be outside. So this is A and this is B. This is A and this is B. This is A and this is B. In this case, in, in this second scenario, you're going to have a lot of these molecules inside the cell. And you have a little bit of molecules outside the cell of the same, same type. And on case three, you have the same number of six here, just to make a number, four, five, six. They have the same number of, of molecules. Tell me, between A and B, which one, where is more concentrated, A or B? B. B. B is more concentrated than A. Here, where, who is more concentrated? A. 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 And here, how is the concentration? Equal. Equal. Okay. So here is going to, listen to this, please. This is very confusing. I don't want you to get confused. There is two terms, three terms hypotonic, hypertonic, and isotonic. This is hypertonic. Hypertonic means high. Tonic means concentration. Where is the higher concentration? So high concentration, you're talking about the outside. When you're talking about hypertonic, hypotonic, isotonic, you're talking about what is the concentration outside of the cell comparing to what is inside. So you focus on the outside of the cell. If the outside of the cell, there is more concentration, that is hypertonic. If outside of the cell is less concentration, it's going to be hypotonic. And if the concentrations are equal, it's going to be called isotonic. This is very important. Isotonic means equal. Hypo means low. Tonic means concentration. So now, here we have this membrane, all this membrane is the semi-permeable membrane. And the universal law, they require that everything should be in equal concentration, inside and outside. But these molecules are too big, too huge, they cannot pass through the cell membrane. So what is doing the body is trying to dilute. So you already know that we have a lot of water inside, a lot of water outside the cell. So what happened? You're trying to dilute the high concentration. So water, water, water are going to start going out of the cell. Water outside of the cell. Here in this case, we need to dilute. So water is going to come inside the cell in order to obtain equal concentration. Remember the sugar and the tea. And here, water yeah. is not coming in, coming out. Why? Because it's already equal concentration. You don't need to have any exchange of water. Conclusion here. Remember this. Water goes to higher concentration. That's it. So the water is going to go. Where is the high concentration? Outside of the cell. All right, so water starts to go out. So because water, they love to go with is the high concentration. The water likes to be high. The water likes love high. Water love high. Here we have where is the 
here, here is, we have hypotonic. So I see if this is hypotonic, then it means that the in relation with the inside, inside is high concentration. So that's why the water are going to go to the high concentration inside the cell. Now, when you have hypotonic, 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 I will tell you who is hypotonic, the water. Water is hypotonic. I, water is hypotonic. If you are hypotonic, that means the water is going to enter into the cells. And what is happening is going to make the cell actually full of water and they are going to blow up and the person die. Remember that example I gave you in the past? Uh, many times, many years ago, there was a contest in the radio that said, who can drink a lot of water? Who can drink a lot of water? And the one who win die. Why? Because they put so much water, hypotonic fluid into the cells, into the body, that the, the, the blood become hypotonic. So what happened? The, the water start to get into the cells. So they go into the cells. Which cells? Especially the nervous system. All the cells are going to be distended, 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 and blow up. The patient entered into seizures, convulsions, coma, and death. That is hypotonic. How to remember that? Hypotonic produce high, I don't know how to pronounce that, hypopotamus. Hypopotamus, I guess. Hypo. Hypotonic make hypopotamus. So hypopotamus means the cell that is swollen. Are you okay with that? Yes, thank, thank you. Now, when the water is coming out from the cell in the case of hypertonic, the cells are going to be like you have a, 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 a bag with, with air distended. Take all the air out from the bag. And what happened? The bag <coughs> shrink. The bag shrink. So the cells are going to be like this. Totally, totally shrink. That is called the crenation. Crenation. Question for the exam. Crenation. Okay? All right. So let's go to the very important topic here, isotonic. Isotonic, isotonic is going to be a substance that they have the same concentration of the blood. Who is giving you that? They are going to give you the, here, the dextrose. Dextrose 5%. 5% dextrose. This substance they give you into your eye, into your vein, are isotonic, is isotonic. So there is no exchange of water. There is no shift of water from inside the cell to outside or vice versa because the concentration is the same. They don't need to have any, any, any exchange of water. Isotonic. Dextrose, what is dextrose? Dextrose is glucose. Is the other name. Dextrose is glucose. Glucose, dextrose is the same. Here we have sodium chloride. We call NS, NS normal saline solution. Normal saline solution. What is the normal saline solution? We have sodium chloride. That is salt. All right? So, but the concentration that you give here is the same concentration that you have in your blood. So there is no exchange of fluids. You okay with that? Yes, yes. Here we have here we have the alveoli, just to show you something here. The alveolus, alveolus is singular, alveoli is plural, and here each alveolus is surrounded by one capillary. This is the capillary. You see here so the alveoli is surrounded by a capillary. When you take oxygen, you have a lot of oxygen in your when you breathe in. That's why the arrow is down. You inhale a lot of oxygen, but the blood that is coming to the lungs are having low oxygen, low levels of oxygen. So that's why by simple diffusion, they are going to go from the alveoli to the capillary. But at the time that you are circulating your blood, the blood, are, the, the, the blood is going to distribute the oxygen for chemical reactions. The cells, remember the car, are going to release carbon dioxide. So the more oxygen they use, the more carbon dioxide they are going to have. So when the blood is coming back to the heart to receive oxygen, you have a lot of carbon dioxide. But when you breathe in, you have a little bit of carbon dioxide. So that's why high concentration go to low concentration by simple diffusion. 
and that's how your carbon dioxide go out of your body. You okay with that? Yes. All right. So we have uh, cell aging. We have the apoptosis. Apoptosis is the program that the cell having when to die. So, for example, you have 110 years old. You need to. You have to die. The body is not being made to to live uh, more than 100 years, right? Some people depends, right? But average, right? The average age in United States to uh, survival is 77 years old right now. In the past was 65. Well, anyhow, another time. Apoptosis is the program of death, dead cell, dead cell program. So the cell may know when to born, when to grow, when to reproduce, when to get mature, and when to die. So the cells that you have in your body are not the same the cells that you have one year ago or two years ago or seven years ago. The cells are being uh, always being replaced. All right, cell cancers and uh, cells and cancer. Okay, cells and cancer is when you have, for example, we have an inflammation. I'm not going to go on, on the cardinal signs of inflammation yet, but you already know about that. The cardinal inflammation. So inflammation. So when you have inflammation, means that these actually some cells are going to die, dead cells. So when you have inflammation, always there is a component of dead cells. Always is a component of dead cells. These dead cells are actually need to be replaced. So, for example, you know, patients with with alcoholism, they can have uh, liver cancer or not? Yes. People who smoke, they can have lung cancer. Yes. yes. So what happened? All these toxins. Let's talk about the lung cancer. Lung cancer. All these toxins. Are, some toxins are going to stay on the lungs. They are not going to be dissolved and never going to go out. So this produce an inflammation reaction around that particle. So if the, there is an inflammation, what happened is that the, the body is trying to replace the cells, to replace the cells. All right, so let's, let's do another example. The liver. The liver, when you have alcohol, you have inflammation of the liver. Doesn't matter what what amount. You have certain level of inflammation of the liver. Uh, what happened with inflammation equal to say dead cells. So the liver are going to have what we call inflammation of the liver. Hepatitis. Hepatitis is not just hepatitis A, B, C, D viruses. Hepatitis could be just with alcohol. Uh, inflammation of the liver. Right, so this liver are going to destroy cells are going to need to be replaced. But you're not drinking all day; you're drinking just for one day, and then the inflammation is gone. So inflammation is gone means that the liver is is replacing the cells who are being destroyed and stop. There is no more cell division because you don't need it. There is no more inflammation. But what happened when you are alcoholic? When you are alcoholic you're going to drink and drink every day. So your liver permanently is being injured. And what happened? Inflammation produced dead cells. And the liver starts to try to regenerate every day. No stop. Every day. One day. One week. One month. One year. 10 years. 20 years. 25 years. Reproducing, reproducing, re replacing. There is a moment that the cells with this an abnormal sequence of of replacement, they make a mistake. One of the genes are going to be having a mutation. And what happened? The cells do not know when to stop the cell division. And when they don't know what, when to stop the cell division, you start to accumulate cells, masses, tumors. That is the origin of cancers. You okay with that? Okay. All right, and similar happen with the lungs. All right, so re cancer risk factors, hereditary factors. So there is people who have actually risk for cancer. For example, breast cancer. Who is going to have risk in breast cancer? My aunt, my aunt have breast cancer. I have risk factor? No. Because breast cancer, for example, in this case, will be basically from the mother to the daughter. That is the line. The aunts, cousins, and all that doesn't make any 
any uh, increase of hereditary factors, more risk to have cancer, all right? So schizophrenia, mental disorders. So there is a factor that is running in family, okay? Uh, chemicals, smoking, for example, smoking. Smoking having 700 toxins, and since these toxins are not going to be eliminated, producing a permanent inflammation of the lung. Similar happen what happened in the, in the liver. Ionization radiation. Ionizing radiation means the UV light, the ultraviolet light. So people who are having fair skin, they have more risk to have melanomas, cancer of the skin. Why? Because the, the dark skin are protected because of the melanin absorb more UV than the white people. White people doesn't have that protection. So what happened? The radiation produced inflammation of the skin. The skin start to, re, to replace, replace, replace. A mutation happen, skin cancer. Physical irritation. Yes, any irritation is similar to say inflammation. Diet, for example, uh, you, you like a barbecue, this barbecue, you eat this, uh, this uh, crust of the chicken, very dark, very brown, very dark. That is cancer. Don't eat that. If you like barbecue, don't eat that. Okay? Why? Because these are a substance called the colantrin. And this colantrin produced is a cancer, cancerigenous substance. Viruses can produce mutation because they mess up with the reading of the DNA. All right. All right, so what time is it, please? 2.01. Wow, can you give me 10 minutes, please? <laughs> yes, yes, Dr. G, I'm okay with. Everybody? All right, so now, yes. talking okay. about tissues. Tissues, we have four, 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 four tissues, don't forget that. Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. All right, so epithelial is going to be everything going to cover the body, skin, nails, hair, and the glands. Glands, so please don't forget about that. Glands are going to be part of the epithelial tissue, skin, nails, uh, what else? Nails, hair, the mucus. Put your finger in your mouth. What you're touching is epithelial tissue. Put your finger in your esophagus, all the way down. What you're touching is epithelium. Put your finger down to the stomach. That is actually epithelium. Put, the, put your finger inside the artery. What you touch is epithelium. Put your, your finger, where, where else? I don't know. Uh, any place touching surface, <laughs> surface of the, of the organ, outside and inside. That is actually epithelial tissue. Remember, glands are going to be epithelial tissue. Sweat glands are going to be epithelial tissue. Uh, endocrine, exocrine glands and endocrine glands are epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue are going to be classified in many ways. We have all these classification. We have here simple, stratified, pseudo stratified. Do I want you to remember all of them? No. What I want you to remember is this one the pseudo epithelium, uh, pseudo stratified epithelium. This one, this is what I'm going to ask in the exam. The pseudo stratified epithelium. Where is this pseudo stratified epithelium? In the respiratory tract, in the respiratory tract, respiratory tract. What is doing this pseudo stratified epithelium? Very important. So you need to remember that, please. The pseudo stratified epithelium, where is that? There you are. Oh, I'm going to make a draw. Uh, okay, I need a graphic. Oh, God, I waste time. Two seconds here. I don't like it. Okay, so here we have the pseudo stratified epithelium. Pseudo, false, stratified epithelium. That is the one I want you to remember. These pseudo stratified epithelium are going to be like this. Where is located? In the respiratory tract. 
This pseudo strati pseudo skull because it looks like this of a pile, as a, a, a stratified means a pile of things. But it's pseudo, it's false. Why? Because the nucleus looks are going to be in different different levels. It looks like this a pile of of one over another, but it's not. So that's why it's pseudo stratified. So in the respiratory tract, where in your bronchi, in your trachea. So what we have in pseudo stratified epithelium is cilia, cilia. Cilia are going to be like a hair, projections of the cytoplasm. Cilia, that is the cilia. These cilia are moving, moving like this, like a broom. So this is outside of the respiratory tract, this is inside. So when there's a dust coming, a dust, these dust are going to be trapped by this cilia, and this cilia is moving like a broom. So they are going to move it out. So they are going to get rid of the bacteria, viruses, dust, etc. So that is a characteristic of the pseudo epithelium, pseudo stratified. But here we have some changes. Some of these pseudo stratified epithelium are going to modify the cells, are going to specialize. These cells are going to be like this. These cells with big nucleus, with acelia too, they are going to be called the goblet cells the goblet cells, goblet cells. These goblet cells are going to secrete a mucus. I'm going to make it blue because, oh, yeah, green because mucus. Okay, so mucus here, mucus, mucus. Yeah, the mucus. Put your finger in your, in, your, in your nose to take mucus. So that mucus, okay, that is mucus, very thick, right? So what happened? Why we are producing this mucus? Why? Because if the bacteria is coming, the bacteria is getting into the respiratory tract you're going to find a swamp, like a swamp. You have mucus. So the motility and the mobility of the bacteria is going to be delayed. It's going to be delayed because the bacteria, they want to go deeper to the lungs to invade. So these mucus are going to slow down that invasion, giving time to the cilia to move out the bacteria from the respiratory tract. So that is the function of the pseudo-stratified epithelium. Are you okay with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, here we have another uh, membranes. The membranes that we already talked in bioscience are going to be, for example, in the lungs, the pleura. Pleura. The pleura, the pleura is a double membrane layer that is covering, is a cover. Pleura is not lung. Pleura is the cover of the lung. And this double layer membrane the, one, the layer that is close to the lung is called the visceral pleura. And the one who is closer to the thorax are going to be the parietal pleura. What is in between the, these two layers of the pleura? So we have here the lung, we have one layer, and we have another layer. This is the visceral close to the lung. This is the parietal uh, close to the thorax. In between, we have fluid. In between, we have fluid. This fluid is in between the parietal and the visceral layer. This fluid is called the pleural fluid. Pleural fluid. Pleural fluid. This pleural fluid is about 30 cc. It's like uh, two spoons of a uh, uh, tablespoon. And this fluid is basically to decrease the friction. Friction of what? Because the lung is going to shrink and expand, shrink and expand, shrink and expand, shrink and expand. So this water in between the two layers of the pleura are going to decrease the friction. Same on the heart. This is the heart. And the heart, uh, by the way, the pleura is going to cover, we have how many pleuras? We have two pleuras, one and two pleuras. This pleura are going to cover the whole lung together as, as, as a total. It's not going to go by the segments or the lobes. Are going to be, you have two plastic bags, and you put the lung inside. So the plastic bags are going to cover all the whole lung. So that is the pleura. And the same with the heart. The heart, we have a, two, a double layer membrane again, one and two. These, these membranes, double layer membrane is called the pericardium. Pericardium. And in between the parietal layer and the visceral layer, they have fluid. They have fluid. This fluid are going to decrease the friction. Friction of what? The lungs against the surrounding organs decrease the friction of the heart with the surrounding organs. 
and that is the pericardial fluid. Pericardial fluid. Pericardial fluid. That is going to be about the same amount, 30 cc. Pericardial fluid. And what is the function of that? Is to decrease the friction. Why? Because the heart is moving, pumping all the time. Okay. So the epithelial tissue are going to have, remember, a skin, uh, nails, hair, and, and, and glands. glands. The glands are going to be endo exocrine and endocrine. Endocrine, next example, thyroid gland, thyroid gland, and the endocrine, exocrine are going to be the sweat glands. What is the difference between exocrine and endocrine? This is the gland, and the gland are going to secrete the secretion through a tube. A tube. A tube. Uh, through a tube. This tube is this duct. A duct. That is the exocrine gland. The endocrine gland is going to be the thyroid gland. They do not have ducts. They are going to secrete directly to the blood. Okay? All right. Let's talk about the connective tissue. The connective tissue are going to be, what you need to remember is this. Uh, I don't want you, yes, you touch, get rid of this. I want this classification. We have the liquid, the soft, the fibrous, and the hard connective tissue. The liquid, let's start with extremes. Liquid and solid, the extremes. Blood is, what is the function of the connective tissue? To connect. So they are going to connect the cells. The cells are not floating in the air. They need to be connected. So that connection are going to be basically by, by, um, by a collagen. Collagen. That is a protein. Are going to be by uh, uh, elastic fibers. Elastic fibers. Okay? So basically are going to be formed by collagen. Collagen are these, small, these proteins that actually produce the flexibility. Connective tissue will be, for example, cartilage is flexible. Okay, why blood is, is connective tissue? Because the blood is going to be uh, connecting all the 11 systems. All the 11 systems are going to be connected by the blood. So what is the function of connective tissue? To connect, all right? So we have, in the opposite, we have heart or structural connective tissue. That is the cartilage and the bones. Now, in between, we have the soft, the soft connective tissue is the fat. The fat that is located below the skin, for example, right? The fat of the abdomen, the belly, right? And fibrous, this equation, for example, open eyes, open ears, are going to be the ligaments and tendons. Ligaments are going to ligate, are going to uh, put together organs to be in place. For example, there is ligaments between the duodenum and the liver, between the kidney and the pancreas, between the kidney and the spleen, because be, be, between the spleen and the stomach. So there are actually membranes are, that are going to be connecting, okay? And that are going to help to keep the organ in place. And tendons are the muscles who are attached to the bones. So just remember lift, lift, lift. F means fibrous, fibrous connective tissue, LI means ligaments, T means tendons. You okay with that? Yes. Okay. So here we have cartilage. Cartilage is produced by cells called the chondrocytes. Chondrocytes, chondrocytes, chondrocytes. The bones, we have the osteoblast, the osteoclast, and the osteocytes we already mentioned before. All right, so talking about the muscle. The muscle is very simple. Uh, this is the introduction, anatomy, the physiology is coming later. So we have, what you need to remember from this is the skeletal muscle. The other name, skeletal muscle, is going to be the striate muscle. All called the voluntary muscle. You must know that. A smooth muscle are going to be called the involuntary muscle. And the cardiac muscle is cardiac muscle. All right, so the skeletal muscle, the skeletal muscle, you, what you need to, for this exam, you need to remember that the skeletal muscle have these striations like this. 
the smooth muscle, they don't have estriation. The, the skeletal muscle, they have multiple nuclei. Nucleus, plural. Uh, nucleus, singular. Nuclei, plural. And this is the skeletal muscle. Meantime, the smooth muscle, they have only one nucleus. That's what you need to remember. Now, talking about the cardiac muscle. The cardiac muscle are going to have this square cell like this. And they have actually some striations, some, not as many, but some striations. So they have something similar, something similar as a skeletal muscle, but it's not as striated as a skeletal muscle. They have one nucleus, only one nucleus, similar as the smooth muscle. So if you see here, the cardiac muscle, they have similar characteristic of the smooth muscle and some from the skeletal muscle. So those are the, it's one nucleus only. But what is important you to remember is, in addition to that, is that on the extremes of the cells, if each cell, we have the intercalate disc. We have the intercalate disc. This is a review, this is nothing new. Intercalated discs. What is this intercalated disc? is attachment that are going to attach very strongly to the next cell, to the next cell. And why is that? Because they need to run the electrical impulse that produce the pumping of the heart. Okay? Yes, yes. All right, and the last one, just to finish here. We have the nervous tissue. The nervous tissue are going to be called that are going to be formed by neurons or called nerve cells nerve cells all right so here we have here the nerve the ner nerve cell or neuron you need to remember that this is the the components of the of the nerve cell all this is the soma 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 or body cell all these, like a hair, are going to be a dendrite. Dendrite. So just remember, if you have a cell like this, that is the typical cell. But if I pull, push, and make like a molding the cell, this is a cell. All this is a cell. A nerve cell is a cell. Where is the cytoplasmatic membrane? Cytoplasmatic membrane is this. This is the cytoplasmatic membrane. They have a weird shape, but it's cytoplasmatic membrane. Cytoplasmatic membrane. This is cytoplasmatic membrane. This one. Forget about the purples. For so, at this moment. Forget about the purples. So that is actually the cytoplasmatic membrane. Here, cytoplasmatic membrane. What is inside? Cytoplasm. 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 That is a projection of the cytoplasm. So they have the DNA nucleus. So they can produce transcription and translation. They produce proteins. And these proteins are going to be the adrenaline, are going to be the noradrenaline, the acetocholine, the acetocholine etc. Those are proteins. These proteins are going to be called neurotransmitters. So what is a neurotransmitter? Adrenaline, noradrenaline, etc. And those, those are going to be proteins. Why? Because the nerve cell is a cell that produces the transcription translation. All right, so part of the cell are going to be the nucleus, the soma, all this is the soma, all this is the soma. We have the dendrites, and we have the axon. All this is the axon, axon, axon. And this is going to end into the terminal axon, terminal axon. So the adrenaline is going to be transported through, uh, through the body, and they are going to go to the axon and they are going to be transmitted to the next nerve cell. They don't go to the dendrite. They go from the body, they go to the axon. Body, axon, body, axon. The, from the axon, they go to the terminal axon, and then they are going to pass to the next nerve cell. Through what? Through the dendrite of the next cell. So here we have the terminal axon here, terminal axon, terminal axon, and the terminal axon release the norepinephrine, adrenaline, and they are going to be captured by the dendrites. And that is always the, the circuit will be from the body to the axon, body towards the axon. Okay? And the last thing we are going to talk is these cells who are covering the 
covering the axon. This is the myelin. So this is the, this is what we call the Schwann cell. Look at this Schwann cell. This Schwann cell is like this. Look at this. Schwann cell. I'm going to draw a Schwann cell. Very long Schwann cell. This is the nucleus. This is if you stretch out the the Schwann cell, you go up like this. So what is doing this Schwann cell? This Schwann cell is going to basically hug hug the axon. They are going to go around and around. This is the axon, and the and the Schwann cell are going to go one, two, three, like hugging many times. And this we have one Schwann as one Schwann cell, another Schwann cell, another Schwann cell, another Schwann cell, another cell. You want proof of that? Where is the nucleus? The nucleus is here. Nucleus, 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 nucleus. It's going to have. So what is inside the Schwann cell? Inside the Schwann cells, we have the myelin. What is myelin? Myelin is fat. What is the function of the myelin? It's going to accelerate, increase the speed, the speed of the electrical impulse. Electrical impulse. Okay, so nerve cells, there's two types of nerve cells. The nerve cells who contain the Schwann cells and another cells do not contain Schwann cells. So how fast they can go? They go exactly like this. You have the football, football uh, field, football, you have 100 yards, correct? 100 yards. The, the, the nerve cells who contain the Schwann cells and the myelin, the myelin, that's the electrical impulse is going to run those 100, 100 yards in one second. That is how fast is running the electrical impulse in the nerve, in the, in the body, with Schwann cells. If you don't have the Schwann cells, some cells normally, they do not have the myelin or the Schwann cells, they run only one yard per second. Instead of run 100, they run only one. Okay? Okay. Okay, muchas gracias. Okay. All right, so tell me how was I, I mean, I, I is COVID I have COVID or my throat is sore? I don't know. <clears throat> okay. Tell me uh, Gabriela Hernandez. How was the how was the the overall? It was good. It was nice to review everything that we learned in the last class. Yep. And remember, the last two classes, the first two classes is basically all bioscience. Do you, do you notice? It's all bioscience. All the whole lectures of bioscience, we are talking here in two classes. Okay? Otis, what do you think, Mr. Otis? Uh, we're going to have the uh, review on Sunday night at nine o'clock, right? Yeah. Why, why are you saying that? It was not clear to. Well, that? I don't. I don't really know what to how to study for this exam. I have to go and dig through all my old notes. Yeah. I, so, I looked through the uh, powerpoints and and through the notes that I made today from class, and and I don't. Hopefully that won't affect my grade, but I don't know if there's anything else I need to study. Mr. Otis. Okay, I, I, I recall you call, you asked me the same question the last time. I will repeat the same thing and probably elaborate a little bit more. Based on, you need to study based on my PowerPoint. Whatever I remark, the concepts, that is what you need to know. You're going to reinforce the material with the uh, uh, homework that I send it to you. I'm going to send it today. 50 questions plus you're going to do the review on sunday super sunday okay plus you need to watch my video in youtube channel plus you need to be you have a lot of material to review but if you're going to go everywhere the book is important because it's a reference if you want to clarify something go to the book okay otis is that okay I, I, yes, that's fine. Okay, mister. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Aurora, tell me, what do you think? Um, it's pretty much everything we learn in bioscience, and um, it's a good review. We already know some of the majority of the stuff. 
Thank you, Luis. Uh, please, uh, Hailey Green, Miss Hailey Green, what do you think? No, honest, honest. Your microphone is off. I appreciate um, what you're doing here. I think there is value in it. And um, I will definitely be taking advantage of all the resources that you have provided for us. Okay. I, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Something else? Something oh, no, nothing. I, I'll just talk to you at a later time. It's just concerning my ebooks and ATI, but I can wait until another time. Yeah, ATI is not um, is not available yet. So this is out of the play right now. Okay, uh, Robin, what do you think, Ms. Robin? I think it. I think it's perfect. I actually can follow. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. It's reviewing um, our previous class, our bio and science, but it's it's working. It's definitely working for me. Thank you. Jorge, right, muchas gracias. I wish I could ask ask everybody and uh, Miss Andrea, please, just to complete. What we uh, is okay, we are actually uh, need to do something different, or we we okay in the pathway that we are going now. No, Dr. Jet, thank you. Very clear, and uh, this uh, refresh is uh, very important for the next step to understand uh, the physiology that house work mm -hmm. with anatomy together. So thank you so much for your effort to thank you. Thank with you. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Andrea. Uh, somebody else want to make a comment? So please, I I I, I prefer. Uh, okay, Aurora. Thank you, Miss. Uh, I I prefer you to tell me, uh, not how good could be since, but what could be better, because that is going to help me to make even some improvements. So you are free to tell me now, or free to call me, or let me know. So I will be more than happy to always hear your suggestions. Remember the class is not just you, it's not just me, it's all of us, okay? All right, so uh, students who need to stay, stay, and I will see you next class. Thank you so much. I'm going to cut my, my recording.